Hello there and welcome to my little arty corner here on YouTube. My name's Angela, Angela Porter and you're almost welcome to join me in my arty, drawing, whimsical adventures, whatever it may be. At the moment I'm taking part in Inktober Tangles 2022, Frinktober, and um, it's a challenge of a tangle pattern a day. So that's what I'm going to do today. And I have to confess that today's, it's, it's lovely, but did I struggle with working out how it worked? I think I've sussed it though. I think I have. I know. I just haven't, there's just not enough tea in me yet to function properly. But before we start, I'm just going to say a huge thank you to everybody who's subscribed, who's given thumbs up, left beautiful comments. I appreciate you all very much. I appreciate everybody who kept Jobs by to watch. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. It really does make a difference. And um, thumbs up are always welcome, as are comments and suggestions even for things you'd like to see. And I know a number of people have said they'd like to see a flip through of some of my sketchbooks. Um, it's, I'm never going to be able to show you them all because they're stuffed all over the place in my house. But um, perhaps the most recent ones or the ones I'm using currently might be an interesting um, look. But on with today. So today's pattern is um, it's the 21st of October and it's bees, just oh, big bee, little s. It's by... Oh gosh, I've forgotten already. <laughs> Midori um, Furuhashi. And it's it's a lovely pattern, but it vexed me a bit to begin with. And I'll show you my sketchbook page afterwards. But I've got a square of paper here that I want to use today. Oh, God help. <laughs> I'm trying to find my right screen. Oh, definitely not enough tea in me today. Right. I've got a little square of paper here that I'm going to use, but I'm going to colour it with some distress inks. And I'm, I'm in the mood for pinks and purples today because, well, why not? And I have got a couple of my of these um, makeup brushes out um, for pinks and purples because, um, well, because I can. OK, I'm going to start with some picked raspberry distress ink, which I often refer to as pickled raspberry. Let's not ask why not. It's just the way my head works. I think I don't think I'm the only one who describes it that way. And this could be an untidy kind of blending, but I'm fine with that. And I just want to put a subtle hint, or perhaps not so subtle hint of colour, on this paper. And perhaps I'll put the pink towards the middle. And it may be that I end up with areas that are kind of roundish in colour on here of pinks and purples. And I, I'll make use of that for this pattern because the bees is a very, um, it's very, it's a floral pattern. It's not very floral. It is floral. And, um, and it's, it, it, <laughs> It flummoxed me to begin with because I was thinking, why am I getting things that look very strange? And I worked out I'd swapped from following the instructions as they were to sort of like going off on a tangent, really, or not paying attention to what I was doing. So I do like the pattern very much. Um, it's not how I choose to particularly to draw things myself, I have to say, because I, I draw flowers, but I'm doing the challenge, so off we go. We have a look at the tangle patterns, and perhaps I can give you some little hints and tips along the way. Now, this one is going to be very strong. It's Villainous Potion, and I'm going to try not to dab my brush. But I'm trying to get the colour in the places, perhaps, where there's not a lot of the pink but I want it to overlap. Just that little bit. So we're getting pinks and that purple there. And I think that will work. I, so I've used um, pickled raspberry seedless preserves, I think I put a bit, a bit of on there, and the villainous potion, which is quite a bluey purple. I could have used wilted violet. I'll show you the colors now in the tin. 
but um, I chose not to. I went for a bluer colour in, you know, for whatever reason. I try not to overthink doing this. I'm using colours from the same kind of, well, I say colour family, they're not colour family, they're, they're analogous colours. And that means that they will work nicely together generally. I'm sure there'll be some that won't, that would defy this. So I've got this paper here, which is now you can see is all pinky and purpley. This is my tin of distress inks. And I used picked raspberry, seedless preserves, and down here, villainous potion. And there's a lovely one, Victorian velvet is one I like to use often. It's um, a very dusky, vintagey pink. Um, Kitsch Flamingo is sort of an in-your-face pink. You think about the plastic flamingos that um, we saw everywhere not that long ago, you know, or still do. They were the thing to have. It's that, that bright pink. You know, it's almost fluorescent, but not quite. And I like pink, but there's a limit. Okay, so let me whisk those pieces of paper away that I use for my background. And instantly we can see that the colour gets washed out <laughs> against my, my wonderful background. So if I bring the if I bring the, the a piece of white paper back, see if I can find one that is clean here. Oh yeah. And pop that on there. You get a better idea of, of the colours that are on here and the intensity. But I am yeah. Should I draw on the white background? Would that be helpful for you? Possibly. I'm just moving my camera a little bit. Well, it is if you want to see that colour. I'll come back to that at the end. That's something new I've discovered. I didn't realise what my camera was doing to colours or how it was doing it or why. And that's why. There we go. So, let's have a look. I will go to this, but um, glasses, things. And I'm going to start in the middle of this page. And I have worked out a couple of variations, which is interesting. But I'll start with the original version here. Do you know what? I am, as lovely as this is, I am going to put the white background back because I really do think it will be of use to you as well. How weird. Gutted. I'm just putting some um, masking tape on one side so that this stays in place so it doesn't, so I'm not um, swimming all over the place here. Okay. I'm using one uh, black Emot pen, a uni Emot. Um, they're described as ever fine nibs which intrigues me because I wreck nibs before pens dry out. So if these really do stay fine, even with my heavy hand, that'll be a miracle. So for this, we start with a triangle. Now that triangle doesn't have to be, you know, it can be any kind. I've drawn them with nice rounded corners, but I'll come back to that. The next step is to extend the lines of the triangle around it. So I'm going to turn mine because if we put the points towards the top, then we'll always have the line going in the same direction. So we end up with this kind of pattern. Now, the next step is we're going to draw bees here. And this is where I got confuddled because I was drawing them on this side even though I, you know, I'd look, I started drawing them off correctly. We're looking for the longer line that we can draw along. So we could draw on this side or on this side. It's this side we want to draw on, the longer one. And we are going to draw a kind of a B shape. I'll do that again. I'll turn it. Now I'm drawing mine with a smaller bit at the, t at the start and a larger one at the end, but I think it's the other way round in the original step out, but I'm guessing it's not going to matter too much in the grand scheme of things. 
So we end up with this kind of arrangement. And you can see these are forming kinds of petals that look like they've curled over a little bit. The next step is to extend these lines. How much you extend them by is entirely up to you. What I would suggest is that, um, as I did, I had to experiment with these. So we're going to draw another B shape starting at the top here, but we're going to go around and partway, you know, sort of like up towards the, or just past the fullest part of this B. Like so. Actually, that's not a very good one because we really wanted it to curl around at the end. So, like so. That's better. So it's got more of a, a curve back on itself there. Okay. So we're going to do the same here. Not quite as much there. All right, so we've started to build up layers of petals. And that's why I wanted this to curve back round a lot more than it has done. So we get that feeling of it being a separate petal rather than part of the same one. Now the next step, we're not extending the lines anymore, though you could if you wanted to, I'm sure. I haven't tried that. But we're going to start from this side and we're going to draw a B across here. Um, I'm just going to check. Yeah, across to, to, towards the top of this one. So, and again, I'm going to try to curl this back on itself. As, I th as I'm doing this now, I'm beginning to understand perhaps how we get a better petal shape or not. Like so. So that completes the petals, but it looks very odd and very unfinished. And so this is where you just go around the outside and I'm going to go over these gaps with a kind of, you know, the, the B shape that you haven't got the line with, like so. And then as much as I love these sticky outy bits, I think I'm going to cover them over with another kind of shape like that. So that is the start of this, or that is, um, this is bees and its basic form. In the centre part, it's nice to fill the triangle in with dots, or orbs, sorry. So it looks like you've got stamens stuck in the middle. And then these lines are very distinct. What I'd be tempted to do here because these look a little bit big and a little bit odd. I'm just going to fill them in with another petal like that. And that's my bees. And of course, you can't have a flower without a leaf. So I'm just going to put a lovely leaf shape like that on. And I'll just put a single vein in it like that for now. OK, so that's the basic form. But you know me, I have to experiment, don't I? So I'm going to use a rounded triangle for no other reason than I can. I'm going to draw the lines in the same way, kind of. But instead of going straight, I'm going to bend them around a little bit. Like so. OK. And then I'm going to do the same thing where I'm drawing these B shapes on. And this time I'm making the very first bump the biggest. And I'm kind of aiming them back towards the corner there. If they don't quite meet the corner, that's fine. The second step, let's extend these lines a bit. And how far you extend them will have an effect on what this looks like. So I'm going to go back this way and around. And 
and I'm going to connect it back to the smaller, smaller one on this one because I want to see the difference that makes. And the same on this one. Like so. So there, it's a lot more spiralling and I don't think these lines will be quite as noticeable. And then it's the same idea here where we're going to connect these. I've got smaller spaces so I can't always connect that B shape in but I can connect them with a frilly line. And then I'm just going to go around the outside adding these shapes in sort of like um, the B shapes or the you know the tops of hearts like so just to create that flower and for this one I'm going to put a nice circle in the middle circles in the corners and squash circles in along the edge to give a very organised feeling there. I prefer the one that's got the bent arms. I don't know how you feel, but I like that. But it's constructed in exactly the same way. And I am going to pop a leaf here simply because I like leaves that are like that. They always look very plump without any, any additions. Okay. So I thought if we can do it, so I thought when I was looking at this this morning, if we can use a triangle for this, the same construction can be used if we use, say, a square. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a diamond because I've drawn it like that, but it's still a square. So I'm going to do the same as I've just done where I'm extending the lines, but I'm going to curve them around. like so and then I'm going to go back along each one like so with that B and I'm putting I prefer it like I did here with a smaller bump at the bottom so we've got a nice big arch there and then a smaller one there so the next step is we extend these lines a little bit you could draw the length of the line you want you know so if you wanted a flower this big you can draw those lines I'll come back to that in a moment and just mark the distance long or start about the same distance long so it's about two-thirds of the way along isn't it So we're doing the same thing, oops, where I'm going with a big line or big curve and then a small one, a big curve and a small one, big curve and a small one. And then remember the next step is to Join these in some way. I'm just going in kind of an S shape on this one because there's really not much space to put a B shape in. And then I can add some more. How am I going to do that? I want to go from here across there. That looks like it might need one there. Little one here, perhaps. And little one here. And so that one works really quite nicely. And here I'm just going to put something a bit different in the middle, simply because I can. And who says you can't? So we have this one. On the outside, I'm just putting these sort of like heart shapes they overlap they don't have to be perfect all the way around think like roses and you know you use judgment where you put them and how you how you join things together so I could put one here and a small one there 
just to tidy that area up. But if you're putting a leaf in, as I'm going to do now, then that's not going to matter so much because the leaf will disguise any lumpy bumpy bits. Okay, so if I go back to the I'll go back to the triangle for a moment because that's the one that has the biggest space for the pattern, I suppose. I'm going to draw around it. Say I want a flower that is this big. And I've put my triangle here. It's not quite in the middle, but that, that's not important. And I'm going to draw these lines right to the edge of this circle that I've drawn. And yep, I'm going to use the curved ones again. So this is a bit like a variation of well, is it? Is it well, the one that spirals out? So that's exactly what I'm doing here. And then I can construct the the petals using the circle as a guide for where I want them to go. Like so. Oh, you know what I've just done? I've just done the big ones, haven't I? Oh, they should have been smaller ones inside. So I'm going to draw my... I'm going to cheat and put the smaller ones inside. I'll do this again because I wasn't thinking, was I? That'll do. And then from this one, we'll just... Fit these in. I think an important part of this is, of, of these at the ends and these ones, is of giving that little start that gives that kind of point to the end of the line. And again, this one, I will come and put That one I didn't do quite the same as the others, but nobody will notice. There's some smaller petals in there. Let me try this again. Okay, so head on, Angela. I'll pop my triangle in the center. I'm going to draw my lines radiating out. And then I'm going to start the first bee about two thirds of the way down. Okay, so I've done it on the short side, haven't I? We'll carry on. Because it will work out in a slightly different way. And you may prefer this way. This is me adapting things on the fly here and making a right mess up of it. So we've got our inner petals there. And then we now need to add the outer ones. So again, I'm going to swoop down and then I'm going to do a B shape. you know, an M, whatever you want to call it. And then I can fill this space in with some petals like this to fill that particular flower. It kind of works. It kind of works, but at the same time, it almost doesn't. And for these big sections, I am going to, so we've got one here. I think this is the other one that's there. I've got this big one here. How have I managed that? You just fill it in with petals and it'll, it'll be fine. 
she says. We'll be fine. And just add a couple of leaves on and will anybody know? The answer is not unless you point it out to them. Because I realised what I'd done there. So we've got a lot of stuff going on there. Um, this one, though, I feel it's more disjointed along the initial long, initial long lines. And that is my only issue with that. What I am going to do is I'm going to pop in a pencil circle here. I'm going to pop a triangle in here. I'm going to do my rotated lines. And I'm going to be careful because I'm going to go, I need to work along the longest side of these lines. So I want to work along this side. Once you've got the first one in place, The rest just happens quite naturally. Except what have I done again? Perhaps the best way to do this is by set drawing that line in parts. And I'm sure you can add more parts to it. And here I've got quite a simple... And that actually works just as it is. That actually works just with one of them once we filled that in on that side. So I think that's quite nice and simple. I actually did do one of these with um, a pen pentagon in the middle instead of a square five pointed shape. I didn't get round to doing a six pointed shape, but I did use lots of different leaves on this. And you can see how I've tucked some in behind themselves. And um, of course, we're going to have things that grow out, spiral round and go back, because that is one of the things that I use a lot of. In my art. with flowers because I just find they're really lovely just to add some filling space in between these flowers. They're like little tendrils which I like. I made a mess there haven't I? It'll be fine. So again, I can do the same here where I'm going to have one that goes here perhaps. And I can do another one here and bring that back down and around. And perhaps one that can go just here just to connect that space. Yeah, I'm going to draw another leaf on this one. I think I'll draw a leaf towards the corner on this one. These ones I haven't got, I can't really, well I could draw another leaf towards the corner but I'm not going to because I'm going to use these instead. Very organic kind of way of adding things in. If you want it very organised, of course you can do that. But um, as much as I like organised patterns and mandalas, 
It's also nice to do things that are a little bit on the, I'm not going to say random, because we make choices where we're going to put things. And I'm looking around at this and going, okay, I've got a gap here that looks a bit awkward. What can I do to put something in there? And here, I'm actually going to pop a, a leaf in that goes behind the other one. And I could do the same here, where I could pop a leaf in here. I'm trying to think, would that make more sense? I think it might actually. Like so. So this is my basic, basic. These are my basic patterns. I've got this here is an odd kind of shape. It looks no, it'll be. I was going to say it'll be all right. It will. So I'm going to put one of those just sticking out a little bit. And um, I think another one could go just there. Because once I start, I can't stop. It's, it's true. And when on its own can look a bit odd, but a couple of them. So that feels a lot. That feels a bit better, though. Things like they're connected behind that. That feels a bit better. So we've got all of these. So what can we do now to add detail to them? Well, I'm going to quickly have a look. I'm going to quickly, okay. Oops, as I'm throwing stuff everywhere. Let me have a look here. Because I did treat myself to a set of Emot pens, coloured pens. And I'm looking for a pink or a purple here. I've got a pinky purple actually. Now I don't know what how this colour will work. So I'm just going to try test it. I haven't tested them yet. That would actually match really nicely here. And I'm trying to think what would I like to do with this? I think I may. Let me have a look. These little heart shaped ones that are coming out, I think I'm going to just pop some tipple in them, but not all the way to the top. Perhaps a couple that are stray, as if we're creating a kind of pattern on here. I don't know if that works. Most probably not, actually. But until you try something, you don't have a clue. So I'm just trying things out here. Okay, so I am going from the centre... Right, yeah. From the centre out to these like this and the same here that works better because it's got that feeling that this might actually be curling over yeah and then on the outside ones we could do the same Problem is, I guess, that when you get to adding an awful lot of pattern, the pattern becomes overwhelming. And when you add colour, the this kind of, it can add to it. But I think it's unnecessary, depending how you're going to add colour. So this is an option, okay? But I'm not happy with my option here. And I've got no idea where this one came from. The other side? No, it's this side. 
Oh, I'll just pop it in, it'll be fine. Right, okay. My old standby, my good old standbys. Oh, what's that? Deep rows, there we are. I'll show you what I mean, because these, these will dry, but I'll, I'll move on to a different one. I'm going to put the darkest colour towards the centre. If you think about it, that's where a flower would often, you know, they'd, they'd be almost like um, a cup shape there. And this looks, you know, how they, they're like cup shaped, so the middle is, is in a dip, if you like. And these are definitely where something underlaps or folds over or whatever. So let's have a look at this and see how this colour will work. She's lovely. I'm choosing to use ink tents, but equally I could have used any media. So don't feel you have to rush out and get ink tents pencils just because I use them. Um, explore your own media and see what works for you because there are lots of uh, there are many ways of cracking an egg I think is the phrase so there are lots of ways of achieving something similar in the end and you've seen me do that here where I've had to work with my mistakes in inverted commas and where I've shown you what my mistakes can be like that needs to dry for a moment. Now these emote pen pens are water resistant once they're fully dry. So I'm hoping these have dried here, otherwise we're going to have them moving. But if they move, they move. No, they're not. But I'm not scrubbing around either. So the colour I'm adding will disguise some of these lines because it will make the colour here darker. And... Um, oh. I'll add a bit more there. So I'm getting a lot of water flooding out of this water brush today. But I'll need to come back and add some more to that. Um, I'll add some... I want to add some around here, I think. Right along the edge and right in that corner there. And here, because that's where it overlaps. So right the way around the outside edge of this, I'm going to put plenty down in that corner there because I want that to be quite dark. But I want this to be dark as if we've got that bending away from us as well. And I've chosen a colour that actually goes nicely with the... Um, the background that isn't harsh with it and I do like that okay let's come back to this because this will be dry now there are places where the water has spilled over but I'm not too worried about that because the ink tents will disguise that and I don't think I'm aiming for perfection because this is going to go into my sketchbook anyway so as a lot of this is sketchbook work there's nothing much that is going to be a finished I want to get rid of some of this water that's flooding out of this brush it's just a bit too much at the moment and of course the water will react will activate the distress inks or will dissolve them make them move and that's fine I'm happy with that and um, because the colours are Analogous, they're very similar. They'll just mix in with the ink tents. So, and I'm trying to make sure that I keep some of the background colours in there. So that purpler tint to the edge. Now, if I wanted to fix the colour, the background, I could have used a clear gesso or some kind of clear gel medium. Gesso's the best though because it's it puts tooth onto the paper. 
whereas gel mediums make the paper shiny or you know smooth so things don't stick quite so well but I'm quite happy here to have the distress inks and the colour work moving as it will in fact this one here and intentionally I've got quite a painterly effect going on I think it's because I'm picking up and dabbing and leaving puddles of liquid in places but it it quite works I quite like that do you know what I could never do that intentionally you know that but it works perhaps it's because I'm working in a big area okay I'll let those dry I'll come back to this one these ones again I'm going to want the Darker, darkest colour right in the base so I'm going to just pull the colour out a little bit towards the edge of the petal but I want to keep most of that colour towards the base so there we are that's still wet over there so are there any areas here where I can work on? But I can here because I can work I can work in the drier areas. Can I? There's nowhere really that's dry on that one. Okay. So here I'm going to work around these and run the risk of activating these as I go. So perhaps I'll do them one at a time. Oop, let's so stick my hand in something wet, or at least cool. You can tell when water, when water's dried, either by looking for the, the shininess it leaves on the paper, or if it's not shiny, you can actually touch it and it feels cool to the touch. And when it's cool to the touch, that means it's still damp. And I let mine dry until it's not cool to the touch, because any bit of water with ink tents, and it just reactivates. There's that one. There's that one there. It's amazing, isn't it, how just little bits of colour just bring something to life. I'm going to remember this trick with white as well. It does allow the camera to show up. colours so much better I think okay so one there I'm deliberately going to go back here and just dot some of that colour into the damp areas and try to create something that's vaguely similar to the other one, the other petals on this one. So... Oh, look, I missed that one there. I've done all the others. So, all around there. Which is quite nice. And you can see the the pen lines have practically disappeared, the colour's taken over, and I haven't really used as in intense a colour as I could have for these. Right, with these, these petals, I'm looking at where they're overlapping, or being overlapped, and 
putting colour in accordingly. So wherever they're being overlapped is where I'm going to put colour in. So along this edge, it's not being overlapped, but this one is here. This is overlap, being overlapped, so we'll go all the way around and that's how it will work. And so you want to keep the colour in those areas because that will naturally create some shadow. Or the appearance of shadow. And strictly speaking, the shadow wouldn't be the same colour, just darker. But this is stylized work, it's not realistic or representational of anything. It's the shadows are being used to create that pattern and simple rules like where they overlap is an easy way of adding shadows so you don't have to figure out things like light sources and where they'd be. I give advice on that as I'm adding colour or trying to explain what I'm doing. Because I often do work with a light source in mind which is always to the right and top and right. So shadows will be to the bottom and the left of things that are raised or, you know, not in, not as on, on top of the paper, sort of. So there's one flower complete. Let's just have a look at this one. So again, I'm going to put lots of colour down here. I'm going to look where they overlap, which is here. I have plenty of colour there. There's some overlapping going on here. And I'm going to treat each section here in the same way. So plenty of colour there. Not so much there. I mean, flowers in reality most probably wouldn't, you know, I don't know. I often think of them having paler outer, fla outer petals, but I'm not sure whether that's always the case. I guess they're flowers, so they can do what they want to do. They do flowery things. At the moment I'm doing angelary things or artisty things. So I'm sure the flowers will forgive me if I get it wrong. I can see the difference these ink tents are making to the tones of this colour. which is surprising me because I use the blending brushes, which doesn't put down anywhere near as much ink as the um, cut and dry foam does, but there seems to be a lot here. Or perhaps because I've got quite intense colors on the paper, all that is happening is that I'm actually just moving the ink intense colors around in the lighter areas and allowing them to create this effect perhaps with some of the colour, which is quite interesting. So we've got two done there. The middle section, of course, has to be golden, doesn't it? And the gold will work fine with these colours, I'm sure. It's intense, so we'll have a quite a strong colour appearing. Now I could take a lot more time to fill all of these in, but I'm not going to do that with you. The one thing I will do though, is I am going to find a green that I think will work with these colours. This is mallard green, mallard, as in the dup. And it's, a, it's quite a cool green, it's quite a bluey green in its way. So with these, I'm putting the darkest colour where they overlap down here. But I'm also adding colour around the edge. Where, they, where the central bit is. And then in this little area, I'm going to leave a bit of a highlight if I can. Now, I know that this colour in purple will make a kind of pleasant kind of greyish colour. Well, I think it's quite pleasant. It's quite a purpley grey, which is a weird way to make that colour, but I quite like it. 
So in these little sections, we may get an odd kind of colour. But at the same time, I know that I'm going to be able to add highlights. And in this central bit, I'm going to add plenty at the bottom, plenty at the top, and I'm going to try to leave a bit of a highlight somewhere in the middle. So I quite like the cool greens. I'm beginning to worry whether that was the right colour to use. So let me head for a different one. I've got an apple green here. Oh no, this, this is too yellowy. It might not... It's likely to make mud with the purple, but unless I try it, I won't know, will I? It's a slightly different approach here where I'm making the tip darker. She's making quite a nice mossy green. That actually has worked. I have seen somebody, I can't remember who it was on YouTube. Um, it's quite a while ago. She makes um, junk journals. And her method for colour mixing is to pick three colours, three or four colours, and just mix those colours together because the mixture will always work and will always tone in. So... This kind of works, but I much prefer this colour. Isn't that odd? Never thought I would. Thought I'd made an awful mistake here. But apparently not. So again, this is kind of, this is all experimentation. Trying things out and seeing what happens. It doesn't work out what have I done I've used a piece of paper um, a little bit a little bit of paper a little bit of ink a little bit of time a little bit of you know ink tents and I may end up with something that I don't like but I'll learn mm, perhaps not best to use those colors then but they sort of work the pink is showing through more here I've got more of a brownie color coming on but that's okay Try just a different green. I'm looking for this now. This is called felt green and it's more of a you know it's a it's a greeny it's a yellowy green but it's darker than the apple green. And you know it's a different different kind of green but let's have a look. creating that bright green colour in between but there is a darker tone to it, a duller tone which may work a bit better. I think I need to put more green down before I start adding water but even those little bits of red or red or pink actually work because they pick up the, I prefer these to that one. You know you can choose it's not funny, that is a completely different green to the apple green and yet the leaves look incredibly similar. Just goes to show, doesn't it? So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've gained something from it. Um, I'll show you quickly. Just let me rearrange my space a moment. I'll show you quickly my um, sketchbook page for this. Excuse me while I just lift the camera up so you can see it in its entirety. Just autofocus it again. And things I've tried out. I, lots of others. There's lots of oopsies here where I realised what I was doing. Some very strange looking things here. And I'm just thinking, this doesn't look right. What am I doing wrong? And then I realised. So I did that and I checked. And I thought, this, this doesn't seem right. And I worked it out. So I've made notes there to myself. But I tried different kinds of leaves, different kinds of patterns, bringing those curved lines out, adding pattern. Not keen on adding pattern to this one. And um, there's the pen pentagonal one, which actually works quite nicely. And the hexagonal one would work. So I've got my sketchbook out. Let's do one because, you know, I can do it quickly here. So I'll draw a hexagon, six-sided figure, and we're going to 
Right, yeah, I'm going to curl them around this way. And these are going to be for my first petal. So then I want to extend these lines. And we're doing the same thing. But we want to connect the petal. Now because of the way I've drawn these and also because of the much smaller space available in between these lines, I'm filling in where these little shapes are made with black. Like so. Which will give this a completely different feel as well. And then the last one. So like that. So there's a lot darker in the middle. And remember, the next step is to, we've worked on the long side of these lines. No, I haven't. I worked on the short side, didn't I? So I'm just going to connect all of these with a kind of arch that has a little dip in the middle. And that will create that. Let me try that again because I've been an empty. So we're going to go this way, this way, this way, that way, that way. And then it's this side I want to pop the shapes in along the longer edge. the longer side like so we'll lengthen these lines a bit I'm not going to lengthen them too much because I don't want to go off the page and then we're going to do the same thing And if they sort of like go behind each other, that's fine. Then the other side is that B shape, but I haven't got space to put it in. So I'm just going to use an S shape just to connect them. And then I can add some others around over those pointed bits as if we've got like frilly, pa frilly petals there. And so we've got that going on. There. So that works nicely. That looks more like a rose, I think, than the others do. So that's really lovely. Such fun. So there we go. So you've seen my one of my sketchbook pages. I will do a look through at my sketchbooks. My paper's bent here because it's got damp. But we have, it doesn't matter which way round it is, it'll work every way. I'll pop it that way. But we have here bees. So I hope you've enjoyed that and that um, you'll give this lovely pattern a go. And always remember, it's the longest the side of the line you draw from that central part, it's the longest side you start on. Because I've managed to mess, get that confused. But even when you do get it confused, 
it still works out in a nice way. And that's all that matters. So have fun, be creative. That one's really fun. It's very much like a bud, actually. That one actually works. That, I'm making note of this one. Let me do this quickly. I'm going to make a note of that in here because it's, it kind of worked. So if I do that, and I'm going to draw my long lines going off. What earth is calling? Excuse me. Okay phone calls what can I say so very quickly I'll, I'll I'm going to add this one because you can see then how it looks like a bird so with this one all I did was I drew these inner pieces like so that one not so good so we end up with those kinds of shapes and then I just connected around like this and it ends up looking very much like a little flower bird doesn't it and if I just curl these around inside there perhaps it looks a little bit more so that's a that's a nice little discovery there imagine doing little ones in amongst all of these little buds so I'm going to say thank you for joining me. Tile wave, which I've drawn there, because it's a, that is a fairly simple one, but I'm trying to work out variations for you, um, is for the next video. So until then, take care, look after yourselves, and above all else, find time to be creative. Ta-ra for now. Bye. Hoyle.